Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington, D.C. Joining us now from Florida is Paul Craig Roberts. He was an Assistant Secretary of the Treasury Department under the Reagan administration. He was an Associate Editor of the Wall Street Journal. Welcome, Mr. Roberts. When President Obama decided not to prosecute, th there are obviously a lot of considerations, both domestic politics and otherwise, but certainly one of the critical pieces of it. If you're going to prosecute, it seems to me that you start with the, the question of, was the Iraq war illegal? Was, it, was international law violated? And if, in fact, the Iraq war was waged on deliberate misinformation, uh, it's hard to think of a, uh, of a, of a crime that would be uh, more serious than that. But if Obama were to open that can of worms that the Iraq war is illegal, then the continued occupation of Iraq is illegal. And it puts the entire U.S. foreign policy in the region in a completely different light. Uh, so speak about President Obama, his, his view of the world as articulated in the campaign, what this decision not to prosecute, and essentially not just continuing Bush policy in Iraq, but now we can see more or less Bush policy in Afghanistan. Yes, well, I, I can't. Uh say why he made the decision he made. All I can say is that the consequence is that we now have a president that neither the president nor the vice president are subject to law. They're outside the law. They can violate the law with impunity. This is a, a heinous development. I can't think uh, of anything worse. Uh, to happen to the United States than to establish legally that the rulers are uh, not subject to law. The entire history of liberty in, in the Anglo-American world it was to tie the rulers down and make them subject to law, to bring the king under the law. So now we've reversed this thousand-year struggle. And we've made the rulers uh, unaccountable to law. This is a terrible thing. I'm sure there are all kinds of political and other arguments uh, made, all sorts of interest groups, but this is the outcome. But there was really no discussion of this. And what this shows is that the American people, the political people, the legal professions, that what was really at stake, they had no idea. What, what's really at stake. And to say that some silly war, which actually probably was an act of treason, since it was apparently based on deception. You know, the British right now are holding these inquiries. They, they already know that it was based on deception, and they're trying to find out how they can prevent that from happening in the future. Part of what's come out early in the inquiry is that uh, it was very clear that Blair and Bush had decided to invade Iraq as early, I believe, as 2002. And the idea that weapons of mass destruction would be more a rationale than an actual reason was clear as far back as 2002. But what do you make of the lack of American media coverage of the British inquiry? Well, what does the American media, media cover? <laughs> if you're talking about the newspapers and the, and the, and the television, they, never, they don't cover anything. So we don't want the people to know that the war was uh, contrived and that some other agenda was being served that we still have not been told. You know, we don't really know. The, the, the government has never told us why they invaded Iraq. They lied to us and said, oh, he has weapons of mass destruction. And yet the record is clear that the government knew they did not have these weapons. This is a known fact now. We still don't know why they did it, and they're not going to tell us. And so probably if Obama is trying to uh, gin up the war in Afghanistan, uh, he doesn't want a lot of news coverage of the British inquiry into how Blair deceived his own cabinet in order to do Bush's bidding and provide cover for Bush's illegal war in, uh, in Iraq. How did you respond to President Obama's speech the other night on Afghanistan? Uh, well, I didn't bother to listen to it. I mean, I already knew he was gonna, what he was going to do. So, it's a very interesting thing. 
because here we have uh, uh, millions of Americans on that very day uh, lost their uh, uh, health insurance subsidies from COBRA. So all of a sudden, millions of Americans, no health coverage. Uh, that day or 24 hours before, the Detroit Free Press published a 127-page supplement to the newspaper listing all of the metro area foreclosures <laughs> in Michigan that 48 percent of the mortgages exceed the value of the homes and yet Obama thinks we have money to escalate a, an eight-year-old war <laughs> that serves no American purpose you know it's like the British ambassador Craig Murray said uh, what the war is about is protecting the pipeline route that the Americans wanted through Afghanistan so they could get the Central Asian gas out without it passing through Iran and, and Russia. So it, is this why we should be in Afghanistan? And, and how do we pay for this? Well, just the other day, Obi, the Democrat chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, David Obi says, oh, we're going to put a, an additional progressive income tax on every American earning more than $30,000 a year. <laughs> so I call this trickle-up economics. You, you tax the little guy and you give it to the armaments <laughs> companies and, and to the oil companies who will or the energy companies will benefit from the pipeline. Well, what do you make of the of the administration's argument that one, Al Qaeda is a threat, a vital it's national a security threat, and more than that, it's a total lie. And, and, and the other the other piece of it is the people. issue of dissolution of Pakistan. So, what do you make of all that? Pakistan is uh, falling apart because we forced our puppet government to attack its own people. All this stuff about Al Qaeda is a lie. It's a hoax. Why, why do you say so? Because it's a, it's, it doesn't exist in any way that it means anything to us. Well, what's the, what's the evidence for that? Because they, well, what's the evidence that, that it means anything? Well, the evidence, well, the, the evidence what, they, what they say that? they have, they, the evidence is 9-11, the attacks on the U.S. embassies and so on. Uh, there's certainly been attacks in Europe. Oh, oh you, mean, you, you mean they, they uh, object to our aggressive policies? Uh, and our hedge enemy uh, in their own lands. <laughs> and this, these, this is, if this organization exists, it's nothing to do with the state. It's nothing to do with the Taliban. The Taliban is not Al Qaeda. Pakistan is not Al Qaeda. The whole thing is some kind of a, of a hoax. It's an excuse. So what's the what's the real so the real objective is is pipeline. What have we had with the 9/11 Commission report? We've had the legal counsel of the 9/11 Commission who apparently drafted the thing. He's written a book and said, you know, the, the military lied to us. The people lied to us. We were supposed to be helping us. We've had both co-chairmen of the commission say the same thing. The 9/11 Truth Movement is very large. There are very many, very distinguished, intelligent people, architects, engineers, scientists, and they point out all kinds of problems with this report. There's nearly never been an examination. There was a political commission that was denied most of the relevant testimony and information according to their own chairman and legal counsel, and they produced a, a political document. We don't know what happened. We, I mean, people can say, oh, we, we believe this because the government did it, but it's the same government that told us uh, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and, and Saddam Hussein had al-Qaeda connections. Well, we know for a fact he didn't. Thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Roberts. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.